All right, folks. Uh, today we're going to be introducing the Nikon FA. Now, back in the 1980s, this was quite an advanced little camera. Okay, and one of the uh, features was uh, multi-pattern metering. Okay, there's the button right there. Okay, you would push it in, and you turn it clockwise. And if you see the little red indicator, that means the metering is off, and you get center metering. Center metering. And if you push it in, turn it anti-clockwise. Boom, she's off, and I mean she's on, and she's got multi-pattern metering, okay? Above there is the depth of field preview button, and on the side is a mechanical timer. To, any, to get any real good use out of it, what you would do is, um, one, first, turn the camera on, second, wind it, crank it, uh, the next three, you want to push in that little silver button, you want to put it into bulb mode. In order to get into bulb mode, you have to push that little silver button. Okay, you saw that, right? I hope. Right? Uh, so you can see what's going on. Put the timer on. And then. And it comes down. Get it? Okay. Uh, on the top, as you can see, on. The shutter speed dial, you have a choice of from one all the way up to four thousandth of a second. Uh, if you can see that. Yeah. And underneath there, there is the your your selector, your modes, your mode selector of what you want, your shooting mode selector. You turn that little wheel, that lever, okay, it's very hard to see myself doing this, and you have M on the bottom, A, shutter speed, S, and P, program mode. Okay, I can't see it because I'm showing you. <laughs> um, okay, so what else can we show you here? Oh, yes, let's go over the, what's missing from here. There should be a crank right here. I'll show you what a crank looks like. A little crank, a uh, rewind crank. Okay, looks like that. Yeah? Unfortunately, this is missing. The little crank is missing. So what I use is like maybe like a pen to, you know, wind the negative, the film, or tighten the film. Okay? And I just use that and then spin it around. Okay? I'm struggling here, but usually I don't struggle. Yeah? Okay. So um, when would you use, when would you do that? Okay. Uh, first, um, if you want to open the door put film in, put a negative in, you go underneath here, right, right, right next to the knob, there's the, the release button that you would push to the side to get the knob up. Once the knob is up, you pull it and it's kind of like a spring-loaded action. See that? The door opens wide open. You still can crank and shoot and fire. No? You didn't see that? Right, let's try it again. Say, oh, I know why. <laughs> Had the cap on there. Ah, you saw that, didn't you? All right, okay. So that's when you put your 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 negative in here, your canister in here. You pull the film in and you put it in there, okay, and you close it. But here's something interesting. Oh. And when you have your film in there, you wind it three times. One, right, fire, two, fire, three, fire, and then what you do is you tighten your negative up. You know, it, it removes the slack in the negative that's going to be in there. There's going to be some slack, so you just tighten this up a little bit, and it tightens the negative up. People don't usually know that, but old, guy, old timers know about that. Okay, so here's some more information. Once you've taken all your pictures, and you'll probably have about 36 to a roll, you have to push that button in. See that button? Pushes straight in. It releases a locking mechanism in the camera so that you can wind it. Okay? So you can wind the negative completely back on to the canister. Does that make sense? Yeah? So, 
It releases that push button, you push it in, and then you wind the negative back onto the canister before you open it. Okay? And then, like I said, you open it like this, you push the side button, you get the knob up, and then you spring load it, and it opens. Okay? And then you take your canister out. Okay, uh, let me see. You got your exposure setting meetings here yeah, by pulling the, the, the whole wheel up. And you also got your ISO settings. So, you know, whatever you need to do, push the button in to turn it. And you can set it on what I got to set on ISO 200 right now. Okay, underneath, that's for your um, motor drive coupling. And that's your LR44 batteries that they take. They take two LR44 batteries and you stick them in there. So your metering system works. All right. So I'm going to now go over the description of this camera. Okay. The camera works really nice, but it could use some seals. Okay. It can use some, like, you know, that little foam sponge seals. It's not real seals. They're like, you know, little foam things to, so that when the mirror is bouncing up it's nice and soft and uh, you know uh, let me see it's a little bit a little brassing around the eyelid that's because it's been damaged previously but I, I got it working again using this piece of metal right here and screwing it on there and, and getting it to work again so now that works so when you want to put an eyepiece on there you just have to make sure you get it centered and turn it on. Uh, there's a little bit of brassing on the edges. Okay, a little bit of brassing on the edges. A couple light scuffs here and there. Tiny little ding right there. Nothing really serious. The only thing that's really that I find a problem with is the little crank is missing. But like I said, it still works and still usable. Great little camera. And I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to do part two talking about the MD-15 that I'm going to attach to it and also showing you uh, other little features, okay? Well, we're going to call this part one and leave it there. All right, folks, see you in a little bit. Be right back.